everyone, I'm Catherine. I'm here with Dr. Bacon for another Breakfast with Bacon. And today we're gonna to be talking about insulin resistance. Yeah, put your hand up if you need help with insulin resistance. Yeah, first of all, what are some things that we would look for? What would be some signs and symptoms of insulin resistance? Do you know? That's... Yeah, maybe some fatigue, don't have much energy, frequent urination, excessive thirst. Yeah, numbness and tingling, blurred vision. There's a bunch of different things that really go along with this, right? You're constantly craving food, right? So. Let's, first of all, let's challenge Kathy. She's got a great analogy. What is insulin resistance? Yeah, so we're going to use the analogy of insulin being kind of like a delivery man. So whenever you eat anything that has sugar or starch, any kind of carbohydrate, whether it's, you know, crackers, cookies, candy, pasta, rice, bread, any kind of carbohydrate, um, insulin's going to take that and bring it to the cells, knock on the door. You have a delivery, sugar then they're gonna take that in and metabolize it in the body. So then next time you eat anything that's high in sugar, starch, any kind of carbohydrate, same thing's gonna happen. Insulin is gonna take the sugar, bring it to the cells, knock on the door. But over time, um, the cells don't need it anymore. So when insulin comes and knocks on the door to deliver the package, um, the cells are gonna say, nope, we're good. You can set it outside, you know, we don't want it. So it, sits outside the door and it builds up over time in the bloodstream. And so that can cause a bunch of different issues other than insulin resistance that's gonna to lead to like a high A1C, diabetes, mm -hmm. all kinds of things that um, are gonna have like some inflammation issues. Yeah, that's a great analogy of kind of what's happening in our environment because what are we eating more and more of, sure. right? And they're taking things out of the food like fat, mm -hmm. And then where is the flavor coming from? From the sugar that they're putting in. So be aware of this. And we're going to talk about three things you can do to help support this. But I also want to go over another thing. You have brain number one here, brain number two here. Guess what really enjoys eating sugar is yeast. Yeast actually is a or microbe in the gut that would like to have more of it. So it can actually tell you that one more cookie is okay. Have you heard that voice? Yes. We've all heard it. One more piece of candy, one more cookie. It's okay. Don't worry. But that's the idea. That yeast. And it's funny because what ends up happening is if you feed that yeast, you won't be that hungry. So those of you out there that are not are trying to lose weight and you can't lose weight because but you're eating less food, but you're eating carbohydrates, you're actually feeding the yeast, not really utilizing the nutrients that you need in your body. So you're actually storing that fat. You're not losing the weight. And this is where we need to do these three things. Number one I'm going to talk about is time-restricted dieting, fasting, and the removal of sugar. I know, it's going to be tough, but we can do this. And in fact, what ends up happening, the more you work on it, the first two days of time-restricted dieting may not be that easy. But after you've started to do this, you will kill off some of the yeast and it will actually help your body. Your, your body will actually get used to some of the less meal, less food, and actually focus more on what you're really trying to do, which is utilize the stored energy that you have, which is usually in fat. And that's what we want to use, right? Diesel fuel is the fat. Rocket fuel is the sugar. So what we want to do is get away from, but of course your body under high stress wants to use rocket fuel. But what we'll do is we'll slow that process down, take away some of the stress from the dieting and eating and give the body a chance to rebuild and reboot. Got it? So it's not that hard. And I would start off with, you know, give us a seven hour window or an eight hour window. No more food after seven or eight o'clock at night. And then wait till we eat around 9, 10 o'clock that next day or even pushing it out. And getting slow as you start to spread that time out and start eating around 1, maybe 2, or then even into the evening later on that night. So we have some ideas behind that. If you want some more information about that, just comment below and we'll definitely be here to help you out. And number two would be what, Catherine? To increase your fat intake, so getting in lots of good healthy fats because fat is the only macronutrient that's not going to have an impact on insulin like carbs and protein will because protein can be converted to sugar if needed, um, whereas fat cannot. So getting in lots of avocado, olive oil, um, coconut, coconut oil, nuts, seeds, all of those good healthy fats. Yeah, I just had, like I said, I just had a kid who's uh, an autistic kid who's growing and developing and the, the mother said, my goodness, he's eating you know, me out of house and home. But what he's eating more of is they're doing two spoons full of coconut oil in the morning at lunch and at dinner. And that tells us that he's craving that energy source versus, and they don't eat a lot of sugar. So this is an amazing step for him. 
because it's also helping with brain development and things like that, which is a really good step. So, and then now let's talk about the third thing and final thing. I'm just going to bring up one of my favorite vitamins that we have in our cleanse, which I'm going to talk about also, because cleansing would be another great opportunity to get that insulin to go down because you're not going to eat as much of that food. Now, it's called Diaplex, and we use it in here. It's got Zypan. It's got AF beta food, so Zypan is going to be digestive support. AF beta is going to be liver, beta call for liver, pancreatrophin PMG, which is going to be for the pancreas. Also, pituitary because it helps with the endocrine system. And it also has a chromium yeast in it that helps get the insulin or the sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cell. Remember that delivery? Mm -hmm. We're using insulin to do that. We're knocking on the door. Let's get it into the cell. Let's get rid of it out of the bloodstream. And that will also calm down some of the stress response. But a 21-day cleanse is an amazing way to really kind of convert. It, in, it incorporates the fasting. It incorporates better food. It incorporates some vitamins and support. Like it's a really good way. And we do it at, at the beginning of each year and also in the middle of the year. Then we have some other blood sugar cleanses in between. But January, we have so many repeat offenders come back and do this again with us. So it's a lot of fun. If you have, want more information on that, let us know. So Catherine, thank you. Great storytelling give, uh, abilities. Great storytelling abilities. We enjoy you guys. We appreciate you spending the time with us. And thank you for paying attention and sharing this with your friends and family. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next Breakfast with Bacon.